In today's class, we'll continue with the problem that was stated in the previous class. Let's get started. The problem is stated that this state A0, A1 will be changing on every clock pulse triggering starting from 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 if the input equal to 0 and at that moment output will be 0. But if the input equal to 1, then this change in a0 and a1 will be stopped even though clock pulse triggers that was the problem we were asked to solve in our very first step what we did we formulated the state table the functional relationships among the inputs outputs and flip-flop states of a sequ sequential circuit are represented in a state table and state diagram is graphical representation of a state table for our problem this is the state diagram we have two state variable using two state variable we can have four states 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. and we can see from our problem formulation if the present state is 0, 0 it will go to next state 0, 1 state if the input is 0 and corresponding output will be 0 if the present state is 0, 0 it will come back to 0, 0 position if the input is 1 and corresponding output will be 1 and if the present state is 0, 1, it will go to the next state, 1, 0 state in the next clock pass triggering if input equal to 0 and corresponding output will be 1. But in the next clock pass triggering, it will re remain in the same state, 0, 1 will remain in the same state if the input is 1 and corresponding output will be 1. In this way, we plotted our state diagram. This is the graphical representation of our state table. I think by now you will be able to produce state table from state diagram and state diagram from state table. At the very first stage of our designing, we will design this flip flop block first. Inside this flip flop block, for our designing purpose, first of all, we must define how many flip flops are we going to use and what type of flip flops we are going to use. From this state table or state diagram, we must see how many bits are there in each state. In our case, we have two bits per state. Using two bits, we can have four distinct states. So we have two bits and we can represent four distinct states. Now, the number of flip flop required is exactly equal to the number of state bit. Here we can see we have two bits in each state. So the number of flip flop that is needed to be used is two. Hence for designing this circuit, we must use two flip flop. So here inside this flip flop box for the problem that was stated, we must use two flip flop because the number of flip flop is equal to the number of bit per state. Next, what type of flip flop are we going to use? We can use any type of flip flop for designing our circuit. In this problem, let's design the circuit using JK flip flop. However, if you understand to design the circuit using JK flip flop, you will be able to design the same circuit using other flip flops as well. So, as it is finalized that we need to use two flip flop and the type of flip flop that we chose is JK flip flop. So, we are placing two flip flop, flip flop 1 and flip flop 2. If you remember, the states were represented by A0 and A1. If we see from here, our states are represented by A0 and A1. Hence, the first state output of the first JK flip flop is represented by A0 and the state output of the second JK flip flop is rep represented by A1. This is the inverted output of A0 as we know this is the inverted output of A1 we already know we will get it automatically. Inputs of the first JK flip flop are J0, K0 and inputs of the second JK flip flops are J1, K1. Both are being supplied by same clock pulse triggering that's why we did not change this name this clock pulse and this clock pulse will be shorted i'll show this thing later so inside the flip flop block we'll have these two flip flops now we need to design the combinational logic block before we start the combinational logic block we need to have idea on excitation table what is excitation table 
before we construct our excitation table for the stated problem let me give you an idea on excitation table for example if we consider SR flip-flop for SR flip-flop if we know our present state and we want our next state to be some value in that case if we wish to get a required next state what should be the input that can be tabulated here and the table that lists the required inputs for a given change of a state is named as excitation table here we'll develop a excitation table for different types of flip-flops first let's start with sr flip-flop this is the graphical symbol of sr flip-flop and for first case if my present state is zero i want my next state to be zero what should be the input if we know input cannot have s equal to 1 because s equal to 1 will make the next state to be 1 set output so s must be equal to 0 well what will be the uh, value of r in that case if i have present state equal to 0 i want my next state to be 0 to make my next state to be 0 either i can make r equal to 1 that will give me the reset output as we know our present output is 0 i want my next state to be 0 i can hold the previous output so the value of s will be zero for sure no doubt but the value of r is true for one and zero for one the output next output will be zero due to the reset case for zero it will hold the previous and i know my previous is zero so for both case i'll get the next output to be zero so i'll place s equal to zero but r is true for zero and one and that's why we are placing don't care condition i hope you understood now let's see the next case suppose my present state is zero i want my next state to be one so what can be the input to get this type of output the value of s is supposed to be one because the output in the next state the output is set so to make it set s equal to one and r equal to zero in that case if the present state is zero then our next state will be one we cannot have any other input to get this type of output or this type of state change so the value of s will be equal to one and the value of r equal to zero only for this unique values we will get this type of state change next suppose the present state is one but the next state we want to be zero to make the circuit reset r must be equal to zero and when r equal to 0 s must be is equal to 1 so for this case this will be the input in the sr flip flop now if the present state is 1 i want my next state to be 1 so in that case we know s can be 1 to make the output set and uh, to make the output set r cannot be 1 because whenever we give r equal to 1 the next output will be reset so we cannot give r equal to 1 so r will be definitely equal to 0 but we can have s equal to 1 and also we know our previous case if we hold the previous case that will also give me the next state equal to 1 my previous case is 1 and if i can hold this 1 the next output will also be 1 so we can have s equal to 1 that will give me this one output set output and also we can have s equal to 0 if i have s equal to 0 r equal to 0 that will hold the previous and that will also give me qt plus 1 that means next output to be 1 so that's why this s value is true for both 1 and 0 that's why we are putting don't care condition here and 0 in the r position so this table is the excitation table for sr flip flop next we'll do the same thing for jk flip flop for JK flip-flop, if my present state is 0 and I want next state to be 0, then what should be the input in J and K? The input should be exactly similar to our SR case. That means J should be equal to 0 and the values of K can be either 1 or 0 for both. This is true. That's why I'm putting K as don't care condition. Now, Consider my present state is 0, but I want my next state to be 1 after clock pulse triggering. So, what should be the input of J and K? Well, 
either we can have toggle operation or we can have preset operation. You can see if we have one in the output side, that means in the next state one, uh, we need to make the circuit set or we know our previous case is zero. So we can toggle the previous output that will also make the out next state to be one. Now, if we want the set output, then J should be one, K should be equal to zero. But if we want to have the toggled output, then J should be one, the value of K should also be one. So here we can write in order to get from zero to one condition, then J should be equal to one and K can have don't care condition. Now, if the present state is one, but we want our next state to be zero, what should be the input? We can have either reset or we can have toggle. In that case, to have the reset operation, J should be equal to zero and K should be equal to one. And in order to have the toggled operation, J should be equal to one and K should be equal to one. In that case, we can see the value of J can both 0 and 1 but the value of k must be equal to 1. In that case we can have j as don't care condition as the value of j is true for both 0 and 1 and k should be equal to 1. Now when we have 1 1 condition the present state is 1 and we want our next state to be 1 after clock pulse triggering. So what should be the input of j and k? This is the similar input as we got for a case, don't care and zero. Next, let's construct this excitation table for D flip flop. For D flip flop, the operation is very simple. If my present state is zero and we want our next state to be zero after the next clock pulse triggering, the input D should be zero because D will be transferred from input side to output side in every clock pulse triggering. If my present state is zero, but we want our next state to be one, the input should be 1 in the next clock pulse triggering 1 will be transferred and the next state will be 1. Present state is 1 and we want our next state to be 0 then D should be given a value of 0 and if my present state is 1 next state we want to be 1 then the input in D should be equal to 1. This is the excitation table for D flip flop. Similarly we can plot the excitation table for T flip flop. For T flip flop, if the present state is 0, we want our next state to be 0, then input of T should be 0 because in T flip flop we know input T is given as 0, it, the output will hold the previous. We know our previous value is 0, so we need to hold the previous in order to get the next state equals to 0. But if my present state is 0, I want my next state to be 1. So the T flip flop must toggle the previous output. So in order to get the toggled output, the input T must be given equal to 1. If T equal to 1 in the next clock pulse triggering, if the present state is 0, the next state will be 1. If the present state is 1, we want our next state to be 0. Again, in that case, the T flip flop must have an operation that will toggle the previous output. So in that case, we must give T equal to 1 in order to get the next state to be 0 if the present state equal to 1. For 1 1 condition present state is 1, next state to, to be 1, we need to hold the previous value. In that case, the T input should be equal to 0. So these are the four excitation table for different types of flip flops. This is the excitation table for SR flip flop, JK flip flop, D flip flop and T flip flop. I want all of you to remember all these excitation table how it operates because we are going to construct our excitation table for our given problem. As we already decided for our stated problem, we are going to use two JK flip flop. First JK flip flop will give us the state output of A0. Second JK flip flop will give us the state output for A1. Next, we will plot our excitation table for this problem from our state table that was extracted earlier. As you can see this is the state table for our stated problem and we are going to use two JK flip flop. Let's start constructing the excitation table for our problem. As we are going to use two flip flops, the flip flops inputs will be J1 K1 and J0 K0. J1 K1 for this flip flop and J0 K0 for this flip flop. 
first of all let's see the state change for the flip flop having input j0 k0 now the present state is a0 present state is defined here and the next state is defined here if the present state of a0 is 0 we want our next state to be 1 in that case what should be the input we know my present state is 0 i want my next state to be 1 from our previous slide the input of j0 and k0 should be equal to 1 and don't care condition how we can have either set condition or toggle condition for set condition the input should be 1 0 and for the toggle condition the input of jk flip flop should be 1 1 so the value of k can have both values in this way we can have 1 and don't care condition for j0 and k0 respectively now the present state of a1 is 0 i want my next state to be 0 so what should be the input of j1 and k1 the input of the j1 and k1 should be equal to 0 and don't care condition i am not going to explain it again and again because the explanation is already given in our previous slides how it happens again next present state of a0 is 0 i want my next state to be 0 so here the input should be 0 and don't care condition again for this present state is 0 we want our next state to be 0 input for j1 and k1 will be 0 and don't care condition next the present state of a0 is 1 we want our next state to be 0 so what should be the input here input should be don't care condition and 1 for j0 and k0 respectively for a1 present state is 0 we want our next state to be 1 the input should be 1 and don't care condition in this way we can plot the complete excitation table for our stated problem now in this point i want to tell you if you are asked to design the same problem using rs flip flop so in instead of using jk flip flop here you are supposed to use rs flip flop here and the inputs for both flip flops were supposed to be given here and the excitation table must be constructed accordingly i am giving you the example using jk flip flop the construction of excitation table will be similar for other flip flops as well if you understand the excitation tables which were described in previous slides next we'll design combinational logic for j1 k1 j0 k0 using this excitation table we have present states and inputs next state and the outputs will be changed based on the present state and the input condition so or we'll combinedly take present state and inputs as our total input this present state will come from the feedback side and the input will be given externally so total we have three bit inputs a1 a0 and x and the flip flop will take input to give you the next corresponding states and this will be the final output so we'll go for kernel map for j1 k1 j0 k0 and y first of all let's draw the kernel map for j1 condition in j1 condition if we draw the kernel map in input a1 a0 x a1 a0 x will construct simplified boolean expression for j1 the values of a0 and a1 are taken 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 and the value of x is 0 1 in for j1 we have 1 at position number 2 0 1 2 at this position and we have don't care condition at position number 4 5 6 7 position number we have 4 4 5 6 7 these positions are don't care condition now if we take the smaller box containing this one with the help of don't care condition we can take this and the expression for j1 may be written as we have a0 equal to 1 a1 is having both 0 and 1 values so we can ignore that a0 equal to 1 and x equal to 0 the expression for j1 in terms of soft form that means sum of product form that can be written as j1 equal to a0 and x prime now next draw the kernel map for the k1 this is the k1 line and for k1 if we plot the kernel map it will be looking like this we have don't care condition for 0 1 2 3 position 0 1 2 3 position 
we have value 1 at 6 position so at 6 position we are placing 1 boolean expression for k1 can be taken with this red box and k1 can be written as a0 and x prime fortunately both the expressions are same j1 equal to a0 x prime and k1 equal to a0 x prime but they may not be the same for other problems here coincidentally they are same now let's plot the Carnot map for j0 j0 we can see Carnot map for j0 is this now we have two ones and if we want to cover these two ones with the help of don't care conditions we can have the box like this and the expression for j0 is x prime and also we can have the Carnot map for k0 if we place all the ones and don't care conditions the expression for k0 is also x prime here again we are getting the expression for both j0 and k0 are same finally we will map the y output this is the y output column and this is the mapping for y output and we have placed all the ones in this Carnot map if we take the box containing all the ones we will get like this and the boolean expression for y will be like this so we have got all the boolean expression for j0 k0 j1 k1 and y output now we will construct our circuit these are the boolean expressions we have got for our problem now we will construct our circuit this is the complete logic diagram here we can see j0 equal to x prime so we have input x which is transferred through this not gate and j0 is connected with this k0 is also x prime so k0 is connected with x prime j1 is connected through a0 and x prime so uh, we have taken a0 this is the a0 a0 feedback and we have x prime both of them will be ended and output will be connected with j1 k1 is also having the same value so out can be taken both the flip flops are given a common clock pulse signal so every clock pulse triggering the state of a0 and a1 will be changing and the changing will be according to our problem statement as the design has been done according to our problem so it will act as up counter will get 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 if the value of x is equal to 0 but if the value of x is equal to 1 then whatever the value of a0 and a1 they will be paused even though clock pulse triggers and at that moment output will be 1 when x equal to 0 the output will be 0 or which shows uh, or it's acting as up counter when x equal to 1 the counter will be paused and the output will be 1 that's the complete circuit diagram we can see this portion is our uh, flip-flop portions we are using two jk flip-flop and this is the combinational logic block in combinational logic block we have inputs and we have one output this block diagram exactly similar to our typical block diagram shown in previous slide this is how we design our combinational logic circuit now let's see the steps for designing sequential circuit first of all what we did we obtained the state table and the state diagram the next step was to determine the number of flip-flops required in our problem the number of flip-flops was 2 so in the next step we need to determine the number of flip-flops and this number is determined by seeing the number of bits in each state next we need to choose the type of flip-flops for our case the problem that I showed you last time we chose JK flip-flop but we can choose any type of flip-flop next we need to construct the excitation table for the chosen flip-flops then obtain boolean expressions from the excitation table and finally based on that expression implement the circuit this is the complete procedure for designing sequential circuit 
Now, in order to clarify our idea, we will solve another problem. The problem is statement is given here. Construct a JK flip-flop from a D flip-flop. We know the characteristics of JK flip-flop and we know the characteristics of D flip-flop. D flip-flop has only one input, JK flip-flop has two inputs. So, we need to construct a JK flip-flop using D flip-flop. Externally, we will connect some combinational logic circuit so that this d flip-flop can act as jk flip-flop so from our problem formulation we can see we have d flip-flop now we need to convert this d flip-flop in a way so that it acts like a jk flip-flop that's why we need to have two inputs that is x j x k that is my j input and k input one combinational logic circuit this combination logic circuit, the output will be connected with the input of the D flip flop, and one feedback can be taken from the state output. Now, here we have only one state variable that is Q. Previously, we had two state variables that was A0 and A1, but in this problem, we have only one state variable. Now, let's start designing this. First, we will construct the state diagram. We can see we have only one state variable that is Q. Using one state variable, we can have two state that is 0 and 1. Let's have 0 and 1 condition. Now, how many inputs are there? We have two inputs, but there is no external output. In this problem, we do not need any external output because our given problem doesn't say to construct any external output. Here we have two external inputs, xj and xk. Now, if the present state is 0, if the value of xj equal to 0 and xk equal to 0, that means j equal to 0, k equal to 0, for 0, 0 input, if the present state is 0, what should be the next state? The next state will also be 0 uh, as we are going to construct jk flip-flop. So, for j equal to 0, k equal to 0, the next state will be the same as previous state it will hold the previous state so if the present state is 0 for j equal to 0 k equal to 0 that means for our case xj equal to 0 xk equal to 0 the next state will be 0 so for 0 0 input the next state will be 0 well if the present state is 0 for another input will have next state to be 0 that is 0 1 if the present state is 0 we are giving j equal to 0, k equal to 1. What does that mean? That is the reset condition. In reset condition for jk flip-flop, what will be the output? The output will be 0. Well, the reset condition doesn't depend on the present condition. For j equal to 0, k equal to 1, For if the present state is 0, the next state will also be 0 due to the reset condition. Previously, 0, 0. For 0, 0, if the present state is 0, the next state will be 0 due to the memory condition. But if the present state is 0, the next state will be 0 for reset condition. For next input, j equal to 1, k equal to 0, what should be the output for jk flip-flop? The jk flip-flop should have the set value. If for this case, if xj equal to 1 and xk equal to 0, if the present state is 0, the next state will be 1 for xj equal to 1 and xk equal to 0. This is due to the set condition. Again, if the present state is 0, if we give xj equal to 1 and xk equal to 1, the next output will be 1 due to the toggled operation because we know when xj equal to 1 and xk equal to 1, for typical jk flip-flop, j equal to 1 and k equal to 1, the previous output is toggled. As we know, our previous output is 0. For 1-1 one, one condition, the next output will be 1 because it will toggle the previous output so for two set of inputs one zero and one one the zero will be converted to one in the next clock pulse triggering now if the present state is one at this position if we give zero zero then what will be the next state zero zero will hold the previous as per the characteristics of jk flip flop we are Constructing the characteristics of JK flip-flop in terms of this input. If the present state is 1 and if we give xj equal to 1 and 
xk equal to 0 that will give me the set output so if the present state is 1 for xj equal to 1 and xk equal to 0 due to set output again it will come back to 1 so we have two sets of input that is 0 0 that will hold the previous or if the previous value is 1 then the next value will be 1 for 0 0 input condition xj equal to 0 xk equal to 0 and if the present state is 1 and if we provide xj equal to 1 and xk equal to 1, the next output will be 1 due to the set operation of the jk flip flop now if the present state is 1 and we are giving xj equal to 0 xk equal to 1 that will give us the reset output so if the present state is 1 if xj equal to 0 and xk equal to 1 the next state will be 0 due to reset operation again if the present state is 1 and if we give 1 1 condition the next output will be 0 due to its toggled operation so we have two sets of input which will take uh, present state 1 to 0 condition and those out inputs are 0 1 and 1 1 so this is the complete state diagram for the problem that is stated here now let us construct the state table from the state diagram this is the state table for this configuration let's analyze this if the present state is 0 and the input xj and xk equal to 0 and 0 what should be the next output for jk flip flop that we are going to design for input xj equal to 0 and xk equal to 0 it will hold the previous the previous value is 0 so it will hold the previous for 0 1 xj equal to 0 xk equal to 1 it will have the reset operations so the next output will be 0 for 1 0 xj equal to 1 xk equal to 0 it will have the set operation so the next state will be 1 for 1 1 it will toggle the previous output what was the previous output previous output is 0 for 1 1 in the next clock pass triggering the output will be toggled to 1 if the present state is 1 for 0 0 input it will hold the previous for 0 1 input it will have the reset operation for 1 0 input it will have the set operation for 1 1 it will toggle the previous so this is the state table for the problem that is described here now we'll add one more column to construct excitation table as we are using only one flip-flop and that flip-flop is having only one input d that's why we need to have only one flip-flop inputs this is the d flip-flop input so if the present state is 0 i want my next state to be 0 after the clock pass triggering what should be the input of d flip-flop d flip-flop input is 0 you can check the excitation table for d flip-flop in this regard if the present state is 0 if i want my next state to be 0 what should be the input of d flip-flop 0 if the present state is 0 i want my next state to be 1 the input of the d flip-flop should be 1 in this way we can construct this excitation table this is the Carnot map for d inputs the ones are mapped here if we simplify to get the boolean expression we can take this box and the boolean expression that we get from this Carnot map is d equal to q prime t into xj plus qt into xk Finally, it's time to construct the logic diagram based on this Boolean expression that we got. This is the logic diagram for the problem stated here. This is the D flip flop, and we have constructed a JK flip flop using this D flip flop. So we have D flip flop here. We have combinational logic here. This combinational logic is taking feedback from the output side, and this combinational logic. Has been designed based on this boolean expression now i am giving you a task construct a t flip flop from a d flip flop you do it by yourself in your next ELD tinkercad lab this problem has been given 
to see the output of the T flip flop whether it's working like T flip flop or not. Before you perform that lab, you construct that T flip flop using the T flip flop. The method that should be followed here is exactly similar to the method I showed you earlier. That's all for today. We'll meet again in the next class. Thank you. Feel free to contact me if you have any question.